Hi, this is Nick from Cattleweld coming at you today from our office in Vaughan, Ontario. Uh, so as you might see behind me, we got a few things going on. We got these little electric motors. And uh, what I wanted to do today was uh, the first part to a two-part video where we're going to talk about these and welding on cast aluminum. This was uh, a real learning curve for me today. Uh, I went in to do a demo for a customer and I assumed that I'd be able to weld on these immediately with no problems. And to be honest, everything kind of fell apart. I couldn't do it at all. Um, and I had to ask the customer nicely to let me take these with me back here so we could figure out how to weld the cast aluminum. I spent a lot of time today on the internet. Um, I talked to a few of the experts that I know here in town. Um, talked to some of our experts here at Candle Weld. And I think we have a good working process that we're gonna try out for you guys in the next video. But today I wanna to talk about all the things that we learned first. And then we're gonna implement all that next week. And hopefully you guys can watch this go from being uh, some of the worst welding you've ever seen into a really nice job. And hopefully my customer will be able to use this to help teach himself how to do this welding so he can start his business repairing these. So the first thing I wanna show you guys is uh, let's take a look at the cracks that have developed on the top of these. So these have cracked up just over basic wear and tear. It's been a long time, the, they get beat on, sometimes the shafts are a little bit out of center and that cast aluminum gets brittle over time as the parts get hot and it can crack. So that's what's wrong with these and they both have basically the exact same damage. So next I wanna have you guys take a look at the one, the orange one that I tried to weld on earlier today. Please don't laugh at me. Like I said, I went in there overly confident and uh, I was humbled pretty quickly by the fact that I couldn't do this and it's something that we gotta learn. So let's take a look at these and you can see that quite clearly uh, my welds were not taking to the metal at all. Uh, you, I couldn't get a proper puddle to form and if I did it was all over the place. I couldn't get my, uh, my filler metal to get in there. I just couldn't make it work no matter what. I felt like it was my first day TIG welding. So uh, like I said, I ended up bringing these back to the shop and after consulting with the experts all day long today, we figured out the things that I did wrong and we've also figured out the things that I'm going to need to do to do it right. So let's talk about some of the mistakes that I made today. The first thing that I did incorrectly today when I came in was I didn't take the time to properly clean these. I took a wire brush and I brushed them down pretty quick, wiped it off with a rag that wasn't the cleanest, uh, and then I had the customer hit it with a Dremel for me really quick, just really, really quick. And uh, I thought that that was going to be good enough. I figured I could turn up the AC balance on my TIG machine and the cleaning action would sort of take care of the rest. So that was a mistake. Uh, this cast iron or cast aluminum is porous and it soaks up grease, it soaks up oil, it soaks up all sorts of things. You'll see that when you start welding on it, it all bubbles up to the surface. Uh, and so that was a real problem right there. What I should have done was get a bottle of acetone and take the time. Now these, I couldn't soak them in acetone because they're little motors, but if I could and I had the time to take it completely apart, you would want to soak it in acetone at least overnight and let it get really, really, really clean. You got to get as many of those imperfections out of there as humanly possible. The second mistake that I made today was welding these cold. Uh, I didn't realize that these need to be preheated. In hindsight, that makes a lot of sense and I wish I'd thought of it. I would have saved myself some time, but when we go to do these next week, I'm going to bring in the oxyacetylene torches. We're going to hook up some of the can weld oxyacetylene uh, equipment that we have. Uh, we have it for sale, so we're going to use it in the video as well. And we're going to preheat these to at least about 200, 250. Uh, now, from everything I've read, if you don't have an oxyacetylene torch set up or whatever, you can use a little propane torch. It won't get as hot. Or you can, uh, using no filler, just use your TIG torch and try to establish a puddle and walk it back and forth for a minute or two until it gets red hot. But I think that'll work too, but I'm just gonna stick with the tried and true oxyacetylene torches because I think that's gonna work the best. It's gonna give me a nice even heat without going overboard. I don't wanna go overboard and ruin these little bearings in there in the top. So we're gonna be preheating them next time. Uh, the third mistake was that uh, the filler material I was using was 5356 aluminum, which is almost totally pure aluminum. And I learned that these cast iron cases are actually only 80% aluminum. There's a bunch of other stuff in there because it's cheaper and it's, you know, whatever. Uh, so it doesn't like to mate with the almost pure aluminum. Um, what I should have done was got some 4043, would have been ideal because it's got a high silicone content made with the aluminum, or even some 4049 would have worked as well. Uh, that would have been a more appropriate filler rod for trying to do these and it's going to bond to the material a little bit better. Also, I was using 
these, uh, which I believe are, let's double check our tag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought so. So I was using 332nd filler material and it's a little bit too thick for what we're doing. Uh, the filler material itself is taking heat away from the puddle, it's cooling everything down, and it's not allowing me to establish a nice hot puddle where I can really drive that filler metal into it. So I'm gonna step it down and use some thinner stuff. So for next week, like I mentioned, we're gonna do the cleaning, we're gonna do the preheating, and we're gonna use some thinner filler material 4043. We're also gonna take the time, um, I know you guys already saw those cracks, we're gonna take the time to remove all the paint from the area. We're gonna get as much of it off as possible, because who cares, we can just hit it with some spray paint again afterwards and it'll be fine. For what these are and what they're doing, it doesn't need to be beautiful, it just needs to be strong and to stay together. So we're gonna clean up all around these cracks uh, and we're gonna get the Dremel out again and we're gonna try to groove it as much as we can. Right? I can only go so far with it because they're sort of in a regular shape and the material itself is only about a quarter inch thick, a little bit less than a quarter inch thick. But uh, we're gonna try to groove them out and really take the time to prep these surfaces before we weld it. So uh, the key thing that I really learned today was that if you're gonna be welding with cast aluminum, you can't just jump into it because you've got a lot of experience welding. There's a lot of prep that needs to be done. Again, I feel like I should have known that in advance, but hey, it's a learning curve. I've never worked on it before and uh, you know, we'll, we're gonna get it figured out. So um, I'm looking forward to next week. Um, you guys are gonna join me again for these videos. We're gonna take the time to clean everything, preheat everything. We're gonna have some different filler. I'm gonna show you guys the settings that I'm using on the machine. I'm gonna show you the AC balance that we decided that we're gonna use, uh, as well as the tungsten we're gonna be using. And we're gonna get these repaired up, hopefully beautifully. I'm going to bring them back to my customer and when he sees what a good job we can do with them and he sees uh, you know, the process that's involved and I can teach it to him, then hopefully he buys this machine off me. Maybe not this one, but a brand new one. So stay tuned next week if this sounds interesting to you guys. Uh, don't forget you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you think this kind of stuff is interesting and you want to see more of it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. We'd love to get some more subscribers. And until next time guys, stay safe out there. Keep having a lot of fun. Thank you.